graders, it's me, Mrs. Lamora, ready to dive in with you in this week's ELA lesson. So last week, we focused on different environments and habitats that animals can live in. And we did this by reading our Science Inspire textbook. This week, we're gonna continue learning about some habitats. But before we can learn about our new habitats, I wanna take a look back at the habitats we learned about last week. When we were reading our text, we learned about rainforests, grasslands, and all kinds of different forest environments where animals can be found. One of the things that is so important for us to focus on when we're reading, especially in informational text, is to make sure that we're looking at those text features, focusing on things like our captions, focusing on the illustrations and photographs that the author includes to help illustrate their point, and making sure that we're taking note of any important bolded words or highlighted words throughout the text. When I read this text, it really had me thinking about what it means to have a habitat, what that looks like for different animals. Is my habitat going to be the same as the habitat that a dolphin would use? Would the habitat that is good for a bat be the same good kind of an environment for an animal like a dog to live in? It's important to think about these things as we're reading so that we can start to make connections to the text. I know that our focus for last week was standard RI26, where we were identifying the main purpose to a text, including what the author wants to answer, explain, or describe. And our focus chart included this main purpose lemon chart. And I love it because it really think, makes you think about answering, describing, and explaining, and what that looks like within a text. So when we're starting to transition to our read this week, which is continuing on the same topic of habitats, I want us to be thinking about the main purpose. What was our main purpose for last week's text? I'm gonna give you a minute to think about what the main purpose of the author's writing was. And as I think back as well, I would agree with some of you out there who I heard say that the main purpose of the text was to identify a habitat of a forest and a grassland within our world. Some animals that could live there include woodchucks, white-tailed deers, and then in the rainforest, you could find all kinds of animals like anteaters, different tropical birds, lots of different animals and plants that live in these special environments. Nice work. Today, we're gonna to shift our thinking a little bit, and instead of focusing on the forest animals, we are going to start to learn about some water habitats. So we're gonna focus on oceans and ponds this week, and then our job gets a little bit trickier where we have to compare these two places. So it'll be important for us to keep fresh in our mind everything that we learned about forests and grasslands, and keep that in our brains as we're reading about our new habitats, oceans and ponds. One of the things I like to do before I even start reading, I like to preview the text. And I have my text printed out right here. You guys can access it through your Canvas courses. Or maybe even if you have your Science Inspire notebook at home, you can look at it that way. So I'm on page 38, Living Things in Habitats. And before I even start reading, I like to just go through and take a picture walk, preview what's coming up. And when I'm doing that, I'm noticing there are some really good diagrams, really good pictures. We've got some keys here, text features that we know are super important when we're reading informational text. This is a highlighted word. It's even bolded, so that means it's doubly important and we wanna make sure that we pay attention to those features. I'm also noticing as I'm reading and just kind of previewing my text that they've included lots of captions lots of labels. Oh, and I definitely want to learn more about this page. That looks pretty good, huh? The only way for us to know what this is all about, of course, is to read on. So I'm going to give you a moment now, before we do any reading, to just take a second and think about what it is that the author might have as a purpose for our reading today. Just based on the information we have, 
just based on what we can already see, what might that author's purpose be? I think I heard someone out there say that the author's purpose is to teach us about another habitat within our world. And you would be right. This time, not a forest or a grassland habitat, but what kind of habitat? If we're talking about oceans and ponds, what kind of habitat are we gonna be focusing on today? Yes, water habitats, excellent job. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to follow along with me as we read. And this is the first time that we're reading the water habitats. So it's important for us to take our time, make sure we're focusing on the text, and follow along with me as I read. Water habitats. There are many different kinds of water habitats. They include oceans, ponds, lakes, rivers, and streams. A variety of plants and animals live in water habitats. We're gonna to focus today on oceans and ponds. Oceans. An ocean is a large body of salt water. The water is always flowing. Oceans cover most of Earth. And then the author has included this awesome diagram that shows life in an ocean. It has different animals at different parts of the ocean, and it gives a caption for us that different animals live in those different parts of the ocean. Take a moment to review this diagram. What important information can we get from this diagram that adds to what we learned from the text? Excellent job. Kelp is a kind of ocean plant or seaweed. Beds of kelp are like forests in the ocean. They provide food and shelter for many kinds of ocean animals. Most animals that live in the sea must move through the water. Their body shapes and fins or flippers help them swim. Jellyfish and squid move by sucking in water and forcing it out. Ocean animals also must stay safe. Sea turtles and clams are protected by shells. Other animals have spines. This shark moves quickly because of the shape of its body. Its body is shaped like a rocket. What a great caption to be included next to this picture of a shark. We've got a few other captions on this page. Why don't you read those to me? Great reading. It's really important when we read an informational text that we focus on those details that are included in the captions and in the pictures. Ponds. Now we're gonna learn about another kind of ocean water habitat. A pond is a small body of fresh water that does not flow. Fresh water has little or no salt in it. Most animals that live in fresh water cannot live in salt water. Frogs, fish, and turtles eat insects that live in ponds. Snakes live in the grass near ponds and eat fish and frogs. I'm gonna challenge you to read this last page by yourself. Read now. Excellent reading. And I love this skill builder box on the side that asks us what plants and animals live in oceans and ponds. Thinking back to what we just read, can you name one plant or animal that lives in both oceans and ponds? Yes, fish are a perfect example. Some are saltwater and some are freshwater, but fish can be found in both of those habitats. You did a great job reading that text today. Thanks for reading it with me. I really enjoyed finding out all about the different habitats in the ocean and the pond. 
They had some things that were the same and some things that were different. Can you think of one thing that was the same in both of those environments? Absolutely. That is an excellent example of something that is the same. What about something that's different? What makes a pond different than the ocean? Right again, it's interesting how both can be made of water, but one is based with salt and one has no salt in it. That's what separates them. Interesting. Let's go over some questions for our reading today. Since this was our first read, be sure to go back to the text if you need to. There were some sentences from Water Habitats. I'm going to read them to you now, and then we're going to identify the meaning of a specific word. An ocean is a large body of salt water. The water is always flowing. Oceans cover most of Earth. What is the meaning of the word ocean in this text? Is it A, a large body of salt water? B, a small body of fresh water? Or C, an open area filled with plants? Ocean in this text definitely refers to A, a large body of salt water. And I love that when you go back in the text, you can pull that information right out. It's given to you right in the phrasing of the sentence. An ocean is a large body of salt water. Excellent job. Let's read another sentence from Water Habitats. A pond is a small body of fresh water that does not flow. Fresh water has little or no salt in it. What is the meaning of the word pond as used in this text? A, a large body of salt water, B, a small body of fresh water, or C, an open area that is filled with plants. Thinking about what's different than the ocean. Great job. If an ocean is a large body of salt water, and we know that a pond is different than the ocean, then our best choice would be B, a small body of fresh water. High five to you. You did a great job today. Tomorrow when we meet, we're going to talk a little bit more about this text and then we're gonna start doing my favorite thing, comparing this to forests and grasslands. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Bye.